<laughs> because if you, you, you put it in perspective, you have somebody who cares for you so much that your life is more important than, than his own. See, to me, when you, pr- when you frame it that way, this is a great way to frame a relationship. This is a great way to, to, pu- to put things in order. It says um, in, in verse 28, in the same way, husbands should love their wives as they do their own bodies. So it doesn't just stop with the analogy of, of Christ and the church. It says, you know, you take care of your, your, your body. You know, when you're tired, you sit down and rest. You know, when you've got an ache, you take care of it. You favor it and all of that. Well, a husband should do that for his wife. And again, I submit to you, if a woman is submitting to that kind of a man, that's a pretty good way to live. And Rick, in verse 31, it says, For this reason, the two will become one flesh. See, the sexual part of the love is at the very end because you build a foundation well before it. And I'm glad you said that because that's such an important uh, understanding here. Um, We in this world are backwards. We have screwed up something that is so good and so sacred because we take sex completely out of the context that it was built to be in. When you put that that physical relationship into the context of what we're talking about here, see, then you have... you and I both love sweets, and that is the icing on the cake, okay? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, there's, there's something, because it all fits together and it all works together, this is why, and folks, I will tell you flat out, in my opinion, and this is a Rick opinion in, incoming here, the primary reason that people are not happy in their marriages, that one and two marriages end in divorce, and most people who live together end up apart. So the vast majority of people who get together end up separated, the vast majority of the, the reason for that is because they put sex before true love. Period. I, I, I'm, I'd be willing to put, I don't, I'm not a betting man, but if I were, I'd put money on it. <laughs> okay? Because to me, it takes life completely out of the context it belongs. This scripture tells us how the formula should work. And it's a wonderful, wonderful formula. Um, Jonathan, let's go down to, because you mentioned that the physical relationship, let's go down to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 through 9. Because it, it's interesting, the scriptures deal with the physical relationship, but they frame it differently than we might have thought. With reference to the subjects about which you wrote to me, it would be well for a man to remain single. But owing to the prevalence of immorality, I advise every man to have his own wife and every woman her husband. A husband should give his wife her due and a wife her husband. It is not the wife but the husband who exercises power over her body, and so too it is not the husband but the wife who exercises power over his body. Do not deprive each other of what is due unless it is only for a time and by mutual consent, so that your minds may be free for prayer till you again live as men, man and wife, lest Satan should take advantage of your want of self-control and tempt you. I say this, however, as a con- consension, not as a command. I could wish every one to be just what I am myself, but every one has his own gift for from God, one in one way, another in another. My advice then to those who are not married and to widows is this. It would be well for them to remarry as I to remain as I myself. But if they cannot control themselves, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to be consumed with compassion. Passion, not compassion. Thank you. It would be nice if it was compassion. But, <laughs> but you know what, Jonathan, what this does is this is talking about the, the, the physical side of a marriage relationship. Okay? And it's interesting because in this whole discussion, did you see the word love there anywhere? No. You didn't. Why is that? And I think the answer is a very, very important answer. I think the answer is because that ought to be an outgrowth of love. That is not what love is. Okay, that is that is a that is a physical passion that is not necessarily driven by love. And we have proof of that everywhere you look in our world. Okay? Sex is 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 a passion driven activity. And scripturally ought to be confined to very, very specific guidelines. And, ve- and the scriptures are, are utterly specific on this. And I don't know that if, if you can find any... Well, you can probably find somebody who will argue with that. But the scriptures are utterly specific on where it belongs and where it does not belong. 
sex outside of marriage, the scriptures label as fornication. And it's not a pleasant thing from a scriptural standpoint. So when the apostle takes some time and explains the physical relationship, he doesn't explain it in terms of love. Because he understands that this physical thing happens without love far more frequently than it ought to. He's talking to the, to, to the church in Corinth. Now, you know and I know that Corinth was a very highly idolatrous environment. And they had to come from the dregs, if you will, to rise to a level to live their Christian lives. And it was a very difficult path for them. They had to go through a lot of difficult um, uh, changes. So he's taking the time to explain to them, this is a passion part of your life together. But this is not the love that he's talking about. This is not something that is, is, is um, the centerpiece. This is an expression of. It's a very different thing. As a matter of fact, and folks, if you have a thought, uh, give us a call. It's getting near the end of the first hour, so you might want to save it actually for the second. Uh, as a matter of fact, save it for the second. But it's 860-442-6102. That's 4426 102. It's interesting, Jonathan, there's a Greek word for, that talks about love between the sexes, and the word is eros, E-R-O-S. That's not used in the Bible. Wow. So when the Bible talks about love, it's talking about something far greater than that. And folks, if we could just get the point that the scriptures give us a huge picture of the role that love ought to play in our lives, and if we could master the art of loving rightly according to scriptural uh, um, perspective, life would be entirely different. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. I mean, and that love is, is, that, is not that, that physical love. This is that selfless love. That's what the scriptures tell us to do. So in our relationships, husbands and wives, we would live happily ever after. I, I mean, think about this. If you want the recipe for happily ever after, Jonathan, the love doctor, is in for the next <laughs> couple of minutes. <laughs> this is it. This is it. You know what? All this nonsense about uh, sexual compatibility and all that, that's baloney. It really is because you're, you're, you're putting the, 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 the cart before the horse. You're, you're taking it out of order. And so you're focusing on one thing that, yeah, there's a lot of fun and all that kind of stuff. Great. But that's not going to make you happy for your life. That's what love truly can accomplish. Our whole question was, what does love accomplish? Love, in its right context, properly understood, gives you the ability to live your life with genuine happiness and peace and harmony and excitement. And trust. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. You can get it right here. Just look up in your Bible <laughs> what the word means and how it's applied and how it's used. So as we look at the, the, the relationship between husband and wife, we're just taking a few minutes on that at the end of this first hour. It's so important to realize that the scriptures have a, a very specific guidance that they give. And the guidance does not bode well with current society. The guidance says the man, the woman should be subject to the man. And that doesn't bode well with society. No, it doesn't. But it also says the man should love his wife. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't say the woman has to love her husband. Do you know why? <laughs> why? Because I think that's far more a natural ability. See, Karen's here, she's, and she's nodding. <laughs> it's a far more natural ability. For a man, it needs to be a learned behavior. But when you learn how to be selfless like that, life ends up being so much better, so much more fulfilling. In the second hour, we will continue looking at how love works, the love of Jesus, and, and the expression of his love to us, and what it all means for us now. For Jonathan and Rick, this is Christian Questions. What does love accomplish? We will be back after the news and all that, but until then, think about it. 